This morning, I've invited John and Belito, with your permission, of course, uh, to do a presentation on Common Core, and it has to do with the current education system that we have here in Nevada. It is in other states, and he's going to give his view. He's done a lot of research, study, uh, presentations to other groups, and so John Ippolito um, is in real estate, but he's a father of four. His kids all come go to the uh, local schools here, and um, and he's a previous te um, previous to real estate. He was a teacher, so he pretty much is um, sensitive to different school issues as they come up. So, John, take away. Thank you. Oh, good. We didn't check the sound yet. We're going to do a sound test. Oh, okay. It would be great if our education. Yep. Sounds good to me. Sounds good. There he is. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to try to do this in 30 minutes. Do I have 30 minutes? Yes. Absolutely. And I may run, I may be like five minutes over, so I'll stop and if somebody's trying to. We've got plenty of time. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Super. Uh, my name is John Epolito, and I do have four children in the schools, and I'm a former K 12 teacher. I taught for six years, um, elementary, middle, and high school. Um, that's my email. That's our Facebook page, and there's our website. I started researching this in August uh, 13. When I started, I really didn't have a position on Common Core. I just knew that it was coming, and I knew it was going to impact all my kids and, and pretty much uh, the whole country. Um, so I started researching it. I've spent way too much time on this. <laughs> what I'm going to do is go through in 30 minutes what it's taken me over a year to learn. I wouldn't expect you to get it all but I do think you'll get a big chunk of it. Um, and after the presentation, if I get your email address, I will forward you the, the, the actual presentation that I'm using today. So if you're interested in this, if you're not interested, you know, don't give me your email, but if you are, um, and it'll only be for this one issue, it won't be for anything else. Okay, Common Core, this is just one aspect of the takeover of our schools. The architect of Common Core, his name is David Coleman. He's now miraculously the president of the college board, which controls the SAT, all the AP, the advanced placement classes, the springboard, which are pre-AP classes, and everything is going to be aligned with Common Core. SAT, AP, in these AP classes, kids can get college credit for these in high school if they pass the test. The exams, the government-sponsored exams, the SBAC and PARC, I'll talk more about that later, those are very problematic. Tying the teacher evaluations to the scores the students get on those tests is also problematic. One of the biggest issue of all is the data collection. We have never collected data like this on children in this country before. And we're going to, that's the very last section. That's probably where we're going to get up to 30 minutes. <laughs> and this, this last thing we're not going to talk about except for right here. In states that use the SBAC or PARC test, the public colleges are going to have to start offering college bearing or college credit classes that other countries, and this is in mathematics, that other countries teach in middle and high schools. And, and it's, I can talk about that later if you guys want. All right, so what is Common Core? By definition, it's really just standards, and standards are what the kids need to know at certain grade levels. In kindergarten, kids will be able to add and subtract through 20. In kindergarten, kids will be able to identify 25 three-letter words. The standards are what the kids need to know. The curricula is how to reach those standards. So what the proponents will say is Common Core is just standards. We're going to find out why that's not true in a minute. And I think of a kindergarten class. This is like a one-size-fits-all uh, a way to deal with education in the United States. You've got a kindergarten kid who knows how to read already sitting next to a kid who's probably still going to be having trouble after third or fourth grade like I was. So with Common Core, every kid in the country is expected to do the same thing at the end of kindergarten. High school, to me, it doesn't make much sense. Again, every kid in the country doing the same thing. My son wants to go to you know, MIT or Stanford Common Core would have him taking all the same classes as the kid who wants to be a real estate agent. And the proponents will say these are just standards. And the way teachers reach the standards is up to them. Well, this isn't exactly true, but that's what you'll hear a lot. The reason it's not true, there's several reasons. 
One, the federal government so far has spent $360 million. They spent that with two companies to write the Common Core assessments. Pearson wrote the Park assessment. <coughs> McGraw-Hill wrote the SBAC assessment. Those are also the two largest curriculum companies. What are assessments? Yeah. Tests. <coughs> and I'd like to get through the presentation if possible. If there's something like that, please, please you know, mention it. But if for questions, I'd like to get through to the end. Bill Gates is the largest private donor to this Common Core. Now here's what Bill Gates said back in 2009. Find common standards is just the starting point. We'll only know if this effort has succeeded when the curriculum and tests are aligned to these standards. Does that sound like just standards? <laughs> no. Did everybody hear that? We'll only know if this effort has succeeded when the curriculum and tests are aligned to the standards. This is not just standards. Two months ago, Gates and Helmsley uh, Trust, they are going to review all the material to see, not to see if it's good, but to see if it matches Common Core. Quality is not important. The only thing that matters is does it align with Common Core. And of course, Pearson and McGraw-Hill's math curriculum will be among the first to be reviewed. And states are not going to buy curricula that comes out low. And again, Gates is, is really behind this. So about a year ago at Harvard, Gates said how long it's going to take to figure out if this stuff works. It would be great if our education stuff worked, uh, but that we won't you know, know for probably a decade. <laughs> This is, the, we won't know if this is going to work for 10 years. I've got kids in fourth grade. I think you guys have kids. We don't know if this is going to work. We're just going to try it out. We're going to experiment on our kids and it may work, it may not. Gates's kids aren't in it. No, of course. Common Core, <laughs> this is the biggest proposed change to education in our lifetime, possibly in our country. 50 million kids, it's being rolled out to 50 million kids at the same time without ever having been tested. This is 42 states are doing this. PBS said a major experiment is underway in American public education. What if it doesn't work? Th that's not even a, a, something we can discuss. The proponents are so far down the road, it, it's, it doesn't matter. We're already into it. The curriculum's already being developed. According to bestschools.org, none of the top 50 best day schools in America advertise they use Common Core. President Obama, Secretary of Education Duncan, John King is the commissioner in New York. It's really problematic in New York. People from Pearson, Bill Gates, their children are not in Common Core. Common Core is for the rest of us. It's not for their children. For the commoners. <laughs> How did the standards get written and by whom? It was a three-step process. The first step were work groups, two work groups, one for English language arts, one for math. There were 29 people involved. Of the five lead writers, four never taught K-12. None of them ever wrote K-12 standards. And none of the 29 people involved in that first step, the writing process, were K-12 teachers. Or were, uh, yeah, were, were K-12 teachers. Who wrote the standards? ACT, college testing. Achieve Inc., private nonprofit out of DC. The college board college testing, the SAT and all the AP classes. The three members in red are the three lead writers. Common Core was always about testing. It was never particularly about high standards. It was about common standards and it was always, always, always about testing. That's why this was written. Money, the testing companies. David Coleman is the, considered the architect of Common Core. So English language arts, same thing. College board and ACT pretty much always was written for tests. And the, the ones in red are the two lead writers. And, and Coleman is the architect of this whole thing. He's the guy who's president of the college board now. You'll hear from him in a minute. The standards were written behind closed doors. No minutes were ever released to these meetings. Here's Coleman's qualifications to do this. Has been involved in virtually every step of setting the national standards, and he doesn't have a single credential for it. He's never taught in an elementary school, I think. 
I actually don't know. Uh, he's uh, never edited scholarly journal, but I think he has written scholarly papers. Uh, and a variety of other things that, you know, everybody here has done some of. He hasn't done. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You know, I guess that would be hilarious if this wasn't so serious. This guy is responsible for the changes to public education, and he wanted, he's the most powerful man when it comes to public education right now in the United States. Listen to his response. Can't make this stuff up, folks. You know, you'd think someone with Lauren's experience would understand you never tell the truth when you're introducing someone. <laughs> He has no qualifications, he couldn't get a teaching job, now he's the most powerful man in American public education. This is wrong, people. Okay, step two. So that was step one. They wrote the standards. Step two, there was feedback. There were two feedback groups, 33 people total. There was exactly one teacher involved in these two feedback groups. So, so far we have one K-12 teacher involved. Most were college professors. The one teacher down in blue, Vern Williams, that state did not adopt Common Core. <laughs> ELA, there were no K-12 teachers involved. So a lot of times the proponents will tell you, well, this was, teachers did this. Teachers didn't do this at all. Now we get to the validation committee. This is the, the last step. Everything was done. It was just rubber stamping it. There were 24 new people. There were two teachers, both representing the big teachers unions. And then there was one other K-12 teacher. So that's two independent K-12 teachers in the whole process. There were no early childhood educators and no mental health professionals involved in the entire process. <coughs> there were two people on the validation committee that were content area specialists and had written high K-12 standards prior to this, Dr. Stosky and Dr. Milgram. Both of them, plus three others, would not sign off on Common Core. Now here's what, to be on the validation committee. Find a confidentiality agreement that we would not ever discuss what took place in the meeting itself. That's Dr. Stosky. That's what she said. And when the proponents will also tell you this was transparent, I don't know what measure they use, they're using, but this was secret. And the people involved had to sign confidentiality agreements. So here's the validation committee. The five in red would not sign off. The one in blue is the one other teacher independent of the unions that were involved, that was involved. And the two in green were the two teachers representing the large unions. Other than that, no other K-12 teachers. And Coleman, these people are not qualified. The written objections of the five members were never published. When states adopt these standards, these are handed down like tablets from God. When states adopt these standards, they have to do it 100% verbatim because the standards are copywritten. You cannot change or modify the standards. There is a 15% rule where a state could add up to 15%. Nevada didn't add anything. If a state does add 15%, it will not be on those common core tests, those SBAC or PARC tests. So if they add state history or cursive handwriting, it's not on the test. Now this testimony, sworn testimony in Indiana, a year ago, Dr. Milgram is answering the question, who rushed the Common Core Validation Committee? It was a budgetary question. From the federal government? From the federal government. I, I don't know how that happened. We were supposed to be independent of the federal government. How much influence does the federal government have then? Uh, over I'm, the, I'm not the person you want to ask about that. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> raises a big concern if there was such a rush at the federal level to get this through that just opens up several more cans of worms as long as you're aware of them then, then you can look into them and then I've done my job most states are, are acting like they don't know this I don't know if they've listened to this or it seems like they don't know this it really does once you get this far that was our recap. That's what he said. Yeah. Now the reason this is a problem is because there's three federal laws that prohibit the federal government from controlling K-12 curricula. 
Maybe there isn't a law from them to, for them to rush it, but there certainly is laws that say they can't control it. In March, Indiana became the first state to withdraw from Common Core, about six months or so after this was shot. Again, I don't think most states know this yet, or if they do, they're acting like they don't. In January, Congressman Heck requested a full committee hearing on the federal government's involvement in Common Core. I don't know where that is now. I don't think it's gone anywhere yet. The governor of Louisiana, Bobby Jindal, currently has a lawsuit against the federal government over Common Core. Here's the mass, uh, I'm just gonna give one example for time. Oh, actually, we'll get to that in a minute. So here's what Dr. Milgram said, quote, there is significant international evidence that major parts of the standards will not work. Another quote, Common Core puts us two years behind high achieving countries. Common Core stops at Algebra 2. When you have one set of standards for everybody in the country, they can't be particularly high. They have to be low enough so that most kids can get over them. So what they're noticing in Las Vegas is they're dropping honors classes to make sure that they can focus on Common, Co common Core. My son finished Algebra 2 as a ninth grader. That would have been Common Core requirement. Everything past ninth grade is beyond Common Core. Dr. Evers from Stanford is talking about geometry, it's a rigid motion geometry, and he said, quote, it has never been successfully used in K-12 education in the United States, in any state, or in any country. What? There's a small region in Flemish Belgium that uses rigid motion geometry successfully. It's the only place in the world that we know of. <laughs> Doctor, until now. Dr. Milgram, at that same Indiana testimony. And again, I cannot emphasize enough that Common Core is using our children for a huge and risky experiment, one that has consistently failed when tried by individual states such as California in the early 1990s, and even countries such the, as the old USSR in the 1970s. And that's, that's what you're getting with Common Core. And when you take all this together, hopefully you can understand why I was unable to sign off on the document as it stood. Dr. Milgram is responsible for the highest standards in the country, one of the highest standards, California. So when you hear a second grade teacher says, say that they like Common Core, she doesn't realize this. She doesn't know what Dr. Milgram knows. For a continuum from K-16, this stuff, this is new math only worse and it doesn't work. And California came to Milgram and a couple other guys from Stanford when new math was failing and said rewrite the standards, and they did, and they had the, some of the highest standards in the country. Now what Milgram said in another testimony was, now we're back to what already failed in California. We're back to new math, which didn't work the first time. So when this guy talks, he kind of contradicts what a second grade teacher says, well, I love Common Core. And usually it's the new ones that say they like it. We've had some that have retired indirectly or maybe directly because of Common Core, I'm not sure. We just lost a bunch of teachers at our elementary school. Uh, Marina Radner said, the com quote, the Common Core, and this is a professor from Berkeley, the Common Core fails any comparison with the standards of high achieving countries just as they fail compared to the old California standards, end quote. Here's one example, 325 minus 38, well, you've got to kind of get up to the nearest 10, then the nearest 100, then all the 100s. 38 plus 2 is 40, 40 plus 60 is 100, 100 plus 200 is 300, 300 plus 25 is 325, then you add all those circled numbers up what? to get... Do you that. remember new, new math? No. It's awful. I'm too old for new math. It's <laughs> awful. <laughs> No, I so I then you add all those up and you get the answer. Came down the pipe. Instead of just subtracting. And this is, I, I think this is one of the reasons it doesn't go high enough <laughs> is because they spend all this time on this. So to me, a kid that's having trouble lining up and subtracting is going to have more trouble. And that's what they're noticing in other states where they've already given the test. The low performing kids are the ones that are getting hurt the most by this oh my God. garbage. <gasps> Cursive is not part of Common Core. Coleman and Pimentel ignored the research that showed the positive effects of learning cursive. They just ignored it. Here's Dr. Stosky at that same testimony in Indiana. Count. This is a simple activity. Just count the writing and the reading standards in Common Core at every grade level. This 
imbalance is the reverse of what a century of research indicates as the basis for the development of reading and writing skills. The foundation for good writing is good reading. Not all good readers become good writers, but all good writers have been good readers. And good reading skills are needed in every subject of the curriculum. What Dr. Mil Stosky says is this, this is the reverse of what research is telling us. She goes on to say in a, in a paper that she wrote, and remember, Stosky, she is responsible for the highest English language art standards in the country, Massachusetts. The, the, that's the reason these people were on this committee. And by the way, they are both in favor of national standards, Stosky and Milgram. They just oppose these standards. Yeah. So what Mil Stosky said is, quote, a second flaw in Common Core's writing standards, they are an intellectual impossibility for the average middle grade student. Here she is talking about classic literature and critical thinking. Common Core has reduced the number of literary texts that English teachers will be able to teach because the mandate is for at least 50% informational reading and writing, which is not what English teachers have been trained to teach at any time in their majors or in their educational preparation programs. That division of reading instruction also diminishes the ability of students to develop critical thinking skills, which is another false claim of the Common Core standards. It will not improve critical thinking skills. It will reduce the ability to develop critical thinking skills because students will not be taught how to read between the lines of the complex literary texts they once were taught how to read. So now, high school English teachers, 50% of their instruction has to be an informational text. We're really getting away from learning classic literature. They have a little bit of time for it, but not near as much as they used to. Dr. Louisa Motz, Motz, she was responsible for part of Common Core, but she also, after that, she came out and said the same thing. There's a disregard of decades of research on reading acquisition. And, and these are the experts in the field. Now, New York has an official Common Core website. It's called Engage New York. The parents have nicknamed it Enrage New York. <laughs> on that website, there is a three-week unit of instruction in fifth grade on the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Three weeks in fifth grade. So our comparable is the Bill of Rights. So I went to see how much was on the Bill of Rights, one sentence. What? Three weeks on the UN document, one sentence on the US document. However, in Arkansas, when they get to sixth grade, they get the Bill of Rights. They get to revise the outdated Bill of Rights. Oh my God. The lesson is the exercise. prune to and add two amendments to the Bill of Rights. That's the lesson. The assistant superintendent defended the lesson saying critical thinking skills are part of Common Core state standards, end quote. Dr. Koshnick at the Notre Dame conference back in September, last September. So additionally, it's not apparent that the individual standards were tied to any research. I mean, normally when you see something this important, you see these citations after it that have little people's names and dates, and that's because they're based on research. Not tied to any research. The experts are telling us it goes against the research. But remember, they're handed down like tablets from God. Everybody has to do this. You can't question it. With, while these standards were being written, 500 early childhood health and education professionals signed a letter to the NGA, National Governors Association, and the Chief Counsel for State School Officers. That's who holds the copyright. Their letter started out like this in capital letters, quote, we have grave concerns about the core standards for young children now being written by the NGA and CCSSO. They go on to say, we call on, say, to suspend their current drafting of the standards for children in kindergarten through grade three. How did the governors in CCSSO respond? In their copyright, they limited their liability. Oh I'm going to read what's in red. Under no circumstances shall the NGA CCSSO be liable for any damages, even if advised of the possibility of such risk and potential damages. 
So we've got copywritten standards that the people who hold the copyright, you can't change them, and the people who hold the copyright aren't responsible. Jeremy? This is wrong. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty good. <laughs> Some Lake Tahoe clarity on that, please. Now, since the standards have been released, many more early childhood educators and, and uh, health professionals have come out against these. These standards, K-3, are developmentally inappropriate. Well, when the standards were written, these few people said, this is what kids need for college. And again, it was just a few people, right? Five, really. And they, then they worked backwards. So by the time they got to third grade, it was totally inappropriate, but it didn't matter because there were no experts involved. The only experts that were involved said that it doesn't work, don't do it, so they just ignored them and limited their liability. So they wrote the standards starting in kin uh, 12th grade and worked back to kindergarten. The whole thing is flawed. Here's a teacher and rep of the local school. New York is three years ahead of us in this because they've given the tests that count. They've given them for two years. We'll be giving them this year as our first year. New York for this year, it'll be their third year. Here's what she says to the Commissioner of Education. State of New York, and as such, I am a mandated reporter. And I'm here to report that we are abusing children in the state of New York. So that, that's part of what she said right there. Then she went on to say... So what I'm going to tell you is, because you've awoken the mommies, you're in trouble. This is New York. Remember, they're three years ahead of us on the tests. Um, this is ground zero for the battle in New York State. Um, it, it's this April, when the tests were given, there were schools where over 70% of the kids did not take the tests. Now, granted, those were the schools where the superintendents and the principals opposed Common Core. But still, over 70% of kids in some schools. In Nevada, we can't opt out of the testing. The testing is, is very problematic. I'll tell you why in a minute. Now, back in March, the college board, David Coleman, announced that the SAT will be dumbed down starting in 2016 to align with Common Core. Now, David Coleman didn't say dumbed down. Those are my words. What David Coleman did say is the essay will become optional. The math will cover more basic topics. Remember, Common Core, a lot of this is supposed to be all this great things they do to learn about writing and they become great writers. Well, they don't have to do it. Not on the SAT. The math will cover more basic topics. Remember, we stop at Algebra 2 now. We don't go to pre-calculus, trig, and calculus. So the math will become more basic and the vocabulary words will become easier. Plus, there'll be no penalty for wrong answers. I call that dumbed down. There's no social studies standards yet, but remember, David Coleman, he's, he's in charge of all this. All the AP classes are being changed to align with Common Core. One of the first ones that got changed is AP US History. Now, Larry Kruger is a former AP US History teacher, and he wrote a paper, and he said, quote, APUSH, AP US History, dictates revise more than the curriculum. They appear to revise history themselves, itself. Now, states are starting to wake up to this. But remember, this just happened at the very end of last school year, and it's already in. So every state that uses AP is, is using this. Now, states are trying to back out of this, too, now. The Heartland, which is a conservative public edu pub publication, uh, they, I don't know if it was the, the title. It might have been the title. The new, no, this was just a sentence. The new framework inculcates a consistently negative view of the nation's past. Now, Larry Kruger 
he went on and he wrote a document and he, I'm going to talk about World War II. This is what Larry wrote. Quote, the framework provides no discussion of the rise of fascist aggression in Japan and Europe. As a result, students are not expected to learn about where was I? The Japanese invasion of Manchuria, the Munich Conference, the Nazi-Soviet Pact, the Lend-Lease Act, or Hitler's atrocities against Jews and other groups. This is World War II under the new AP U.S. history. Now here's a quote directly from the document, page 59, paragraph 3b. This is from AP U.S. history. Quote, wartime experiences such as the internment of Japanese Americans, challenges to civil liberties, Debates over race and segregation and the decision to drop the atomic bomb raised questions about American values. Now, the problem with this is they're raising questions about American values, but the framework doesn't give all the history that leads up to why we did that. Right. So it's very easy for teachers that are so inclined to, to do this. Now, the problem also is the only thing that's on the test is what's in the framework. So my son's in that class this year, and he notices it. He notices what's going on. He's very conservative. He knows this class is wrong. He's frustrated. But he, to pass the test, if he's going to have to question American values for dropping the bomb if he wants to pass the test. It's BS. And again, there are states that are figuring this out, but it happened so fast and it's already in. The whole thing is wrong, and it's all connected. Science. And this is negative stuff, you guys. I'm sorry. I'm just the messenger. Science. The next generation science standards. Fordham got at least $8 million from Gates to support Common Core. Now, here's the president of um, Fordham talking about the science standards a year, just over a year ago. Our organization has recently evaluated the newly emerged uh, common science standards, and we don't think very highly of them would not be encouraging states to adopt them. Bill, Bill sorry, wrote that check. So page nine <laughs> of the stand, now this is their written document. On page nine in their written document, in re quote, in reality there is virtually no mathematics, even at the high school level, where it's essential to the learning of physics and chemistry. And they're saying states don't adopt it. I guess $8 million doesn't go as far as it used to, I don't know. The Nevada Board of Education is aware of all this. Back in February, they adopted the standards with no input. They didn't try to get parents, legislators, or taxpayers involved. They just adopted these standards. Most states are holding off on science, not Nevada. So here's what we've got so far. We've got a one-size-fits-all, top-down control of education. It's not written by K-12 teachers or qualified people. There's no local control on the standards. It's rushed by the federal government. It's written in secret meetings. Confidentiality agreements had to be signed. The people who objected, their objections were never published. It's not research-based. It's never been tested. Many experts say the standards are inappropriate. The curriculum and tests are lined up to inappropriate standards. We must accept this 100% as written. The SAT has been dumbed down to align with Common Core. All the AP classes will be changed to align with Common Core if we can't stop it. It's very expensive to implement. We have to wait 10 years to see if it's going to work. What could possibly go wrong? So, how, how did it get adopted so quickly and quietly? Money and waivers from No Child Left Behind, which is what Bush started, which is the beginning of this mess. Obama just came in and made it worse. It took the Democrats plus the Republicans to really wreck this, by the way. Um, back in 2009, Governor Gibbons applied for and received the state, fiscalization, uh, state Fiscal Stabilization Fund. Now, every state, I think every state that applied for this got it. This was to get states on the hook because in that application, they agreed to establish this data tracking system and they agreed to improve, number four, improve academic content standards which turned into Common Core. So just by applying for this, the states were saying, we'll do whatever you say. This was several years before it was even written. And states didn't know what they were doing. Nevada did get $266 million for that. And this was when the economy was bad and states needed money. That's how it got in. We couldn't apply for phase one of the race to the top uh, money. 
But we did apply for phase two. And back in May 2009, Governor Gibbons signed the phase two application. And in that application, he agreed to one, adopt Common Core, and two, improve this data system that'll track the kids and evaluate the teachers and principals by how the kids are doing. So that was agreed to. Five days later, com the final version of Common Core was released. So Governor Gibbons agreed to this before the final version was out there. Now, the, the draft versions were. You know, they pretty much knew what it was. But it's interesting that it happened before the final version ever got released. Nevada did not get the race to the top money. But just, just by applying, you had to agree to those things. So that's how the federal government got the states to do this. Some states realize now we don't want to do this, but not Nevada. Who opposes Common Core? Governor Gibbons. Christy Armbruster out in Elko, uh, she got an email from Governor Gibbons back in April, and that's exactly what he wrote. Please understand that I currently do not support Common Core or its principal purpose, as it has changed since it was introduced and signed while I was the state's governor. So he got us into this. He's no longer for it. And this is what many governors are saying now, including Bobby Jindal. Who else opposes Common Core in Nevada? The Republican Party, the Nevada Federation of Republican Women, numerous county Republican parties, and the Democratic Party of Clark County. Those are all, it's all in their, um, what do you call the um, platform. platform, where they oppose Common Core. The Republican National Committee opposes Common Core and AP US history. Who supports it? Governor Sandoval. Our biggest problem in Nevada is Governor Sandoval. Many other states, the governors are starting to wake up and saying, whoa, we need to study this, slow this, stop it. Governor Sandoval is not. And this brings together the right and left. This is not just a conservative issue. The conservatives were the first ones against it, but there's a lot of people on the left who are waking up. Back in June, the Washington Post published a very well-documented article titled, How Bill Gates Pulled Off the Swift Common Core Revolution. Two days later, both the National Review Online and Huffington Post wrote articles about that. National Review Online, time for congressional hearings on Common Core. That was June 9th. Huffington Post, same day. One's a right wing, one's a left wing publication. Time for Congress to investigate Bill Gates' coup. The next day, after that happened, Bill Gates said, uh, maybe we should back off for two years and delay the teacher evaluations related to the student test scores. This is one rich man that has more say in what happens in our schools than all the teachers combined. And this is wrong. And he's a college dropout. Now, two months after Gates said this, Arnie Duncan, Secretary of Education, said, oh yeah, states can delay for one year the use of the test results in teacher performance rankings. Well, we're at a critical juncture right now. Are we going to let a few people dictate what happens and what all our kids need to know? And the problem is, is most parents don't know about this. What do experts say? Well, most of the experts have been paid by Gates. He's definitely spent over $200 million. Jack Hasser from um, Georgia, professor in Georgia, he thinks the actual amount is over $2 billion. Oh my God. It's hard to find experts Gates did not pay off to support this. Here's some of them. Here's some more. And, and again, the Chamber of Commerce is one of those groups. So they support it. Brookings Institute did not take any money. Back in February, in their 36-page report, they wrote, quote, Despite all the money and effort devoted to developing the Common Core, the study foresees little to no impact on student learning. And then they wrote a follow-up report on uh, March of this year. No signs of an impressive accomplishment. The Chicago Teachers Union, that's the third biggest teachers union in the country, they now oppose Common Core. This is where Arne Duncan came from and President Obama. The Chicago teachers get it. They oppose it. Biggest teachers union in the country to come out flat out against it. New York almost has come out against it, but there's some intricacies. Massachusetts, teachers union. They elected a president who just ran on an anti-Common Core platform. And I don't know what's going to happen in Massachusetts, but I, I know there's stuff going on there. In New Jersey, at least one of the teachers unions have come out against it. Remember, the teachers unions to also took a lot of money to support this. Most teachers are afraid to speak up. 
if they oppose it. If they're for it, they're encouraged to speak. And there is a good place, uh, if you're on Facebook, bat, badass teachers. There's 52,000 <laughs> teachers, and they oppose it. Diane Ravitch, by the way, is one of the uh, left. A big, um, she's on our side, she's on the left, she's very much against Common Core. Here's the polls. This summer, Education Next, which I think also, I'm not sure, 40% of teachers now oppose Common Core. And this was maybe a month or two ago. 60% of Americans oppose Common Core. And then the others are different polls. And the 60%, that one is um, Gallup. And again, not a lot of people still don't know about it. State opposition to Common Core. It was initially adopted by 45 states. Every state that's adopted it has objections. To so far, three have dropped it. Indiana, South Carolina, Oklahoma. There's three more that are getting close. Louisiana will depend on Governor Jindal's lawsuit. Missouri and North Carolina. Then there's eight states right behind them. Any of those could drop it anytime soon. Or at least try. It's very hard to get out. It's easy to get in. But it's hard to get out. It's like quicksand. There's at least 30, and, and this number is low, 74% of the states that have it have legislation pending to defund, slow, or stop it. And, and that's low. This is from all the red states. This is from February. I think there's a few more that have legislation now. And some of those red states have actually pulled out already. There's some of the lawsuits, or legislation, I should say, pending. There's some more. Now, the most promising thing of all, back in May of this year, Education Week wrote an article, and they said that there's only um, 26 states left in the testing. The testing is what holds all this together. Since that article was written, several more backed out. We think there's only 22 states left in Common Core testing, and that's the, the government-sponsored SBAC or PARC testing. In September of this year, there was a lawsuit filed in Missouri over the SBAC. And what it alleges is that the SBAC is an illegal interstate compact not authorized by the U.S. Congress. The State Department of Education is aware of this. They just approved SBAC for Nevada last week. I was there in Las Vegas. Nevada full steam ahead. We are the only state in the country where the president of the Board of Education has funded an education slash propaganda campaign to sell Common Core to the citizens of Nevada. Her name is Elaine Wynn from the casino mogul. She was appointed president of the Board of Education back in January 13 by Governor Sandoval. Dale Urquiaga was appointed sep sep superintendent of public instruction. Dale Urquiaga said, quote, the governor has direct authority over education in our state. And he's right, and we're in a unique position because Sandoval does have direct control over education. Most states, it's not like that. Our problem in this state is Governor Sandoval. States are realizing it's going to cost way more to implement this than what they're going to get from the federal government. Looks like in the country, about $11 billion short. In Nevada, we think it's going to be $13 million per year for the first seven years just to train teachers in Common Core. Pedro from our district, he had said it's going to be 1.7 million per year for the first seven years just to train teachers. In Clark County, the lady from the district office said eight million dollars per year just to train teachers. She didn't say seven years. So the only estimate we really have is 151 million. We think that's very, very low. That's just to implement it. Something that's probably not going to work. This is the last one. If I could either stop here or go through this, it would probably be about five minutes. So how this happened was at the end of 2011, the United States Department of Education reinterpreted FERPA. Um, at the beginning of 2011, none of the rest of this could have happened. The only reason this can happen is because FERPA was gutted. Now it's allowed the unprecedented storage, tracking, and sharing of student data some of it personal, without prior parent consent. That happened in December. Less than two months after that, here's what Joe Hart had to say. The of Education is receiving a $4 million grant. This grant will allow the department to follow individual students' <coughs> progress from pre-kindergarten through high school all the way to the workforce. 
The system will help direct students to the type of college or career-ready jobs and into a field which will allow them a successful outcome for both the student and their state. <coughs> Excuse me. Got you choked up, Jeff? The system... Oh, I get excited. That water went down wrong, though. The system will help direct students to the type of college and career-ready jobs and into a field which will allow them a successful outcome for both the student and their state. You know what? That's not the state's role. We just want them to educate the children. We don't want them directing people anywhere. Th this whole thing is insidious. Now, the way they're going to do that is the Nevada Statewide Longitudinal Data System. And that was developed with two grants, 10 million total, and it looks like they may have to ask for more. That's the same system that allows them to track the teachers by the students' test scores. Now, the federal government has spent over $612 million to ensure that 47 states all have the same statewide longitudinal data systems. The Reno Gazette Journal wrote two articles back in January on what will be tracked. Quote, everything you know will be documented starting in kindergarten. Discipline files and any special concerns, information about a home life. Really? This is all quoted from the articles. Other personal information, including other family members' level of education. There's 400 data points, over 400, that can be tracked. Now, not all of them are populated in every state, but they're all there and ready to be populated as soon as the states can get it together, if we can't stop it. Now, the testing. The testing is, is very problematic. Um, all Nevada public school students are required to take the SBAC exams in the spring, this coming spring. The reason this is a problem is because it's the SBAC who is required to provide timely and complete access to, and this is quote, any and all data collected at the state level. The federal <laughs> government, Department of Education, um, people like Pearson Education, Government Accounting Office, almost anybody who asks for it. And that language is in the agreement between the SBAC and the federal government. So it's not the state, it's not the local school districts who are going to share all your kids' data, it's the SBAC. And there's a lot of things going on with this. To me, this is like a gaping wound, and Nevada's going to try to put a Band-Aid over it. All, there's, most states will have legislation about that one issue. Um, so these, these companies, they're going to have access to any and all student data collected at the state level on your children, your grandchildren. Well, we won't even know what companies get this data. Parents in this state, parents cannot opt out of, this, of the longitudinal tracking system or the testing. Remember, 22 states have already left the testing, and that's easy to get out of. It's hard to get out of Common Core. It's very easy to get out of the <coughs> testing. Governor Sandoval could do that tomorrow if he wanted. Here's the document that says we can't get out of the testing or the data system. That was uh, back in November last year. Now, it's not just K-12 data that's going to be tracked. These tracking systems are designed for pre-K, K-12, college, and workforce. This is a cradle-to-grave tracking system for your kids and grandkids. There's never been anything like this in the United States. Now we have the technology. Now these people thought it would be a good idea. And again, it was all done behind the scenes. It's not like they went out and publicized what they were doing. If people discover this, they don't like it, obviously. Um, and, and again, there will be legislation this session in Nevada to deal with this, but it's not enough. It, 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 again, it's a, the wound is open and bleeding, and they're going to try to put a Band-Aid on it. Teachers and administrators against this are afraid to speak up. Teachers are leaving the profession because of this. Mostly experienced teachers that know what they've been doing for 15 years works. They're not going to change their whole world to something that may or may not work. And that may be gone soon, hopefully. Parents are turning to homeschooling. I don't know how many people have seen this presentation and they were on the cusp anyway and just took their kids out of school. Unfortunately, that's what happens. In this state, I was initially told, I was on Fox News because of this, I was initially told it would cost over $10,000 to see what data the state is tracking and will share on my children. Then, there's the letter. 
right there. $10,194 if I want to see the data that they're sharing on my children. Then the state came back and said, oh no, even if you pay the $10,000, you can't see the data we're tracking because we don't know if you're really your children's guardian. They'll share it with the rest of the world, but they won't let me see it. Then the federal government got involved. The United States Department of Education told the Nevada Department of Education they had to allow me to see the data. Now, the, the, the Nevada Department of Education reached out to the U.S. Department of Education for clarity. That's how this happened. So last month, my wife and I spent almost four hours going over the data that they have on our kids. I still don't know what it is because a lot of it's coded. I do know that there were a lot of mistakes. My older children, they had them at 30 or 40 addresses that we've never lived at. So when I asked the guy going over it with me, I says, well, this isn't right. Well, that comes from Washoe County School District, sorry. Well, my son's going to apply to colleges soon. Well, we can't change it. You've got to go to the county, Washoe County. So next week, I have an appointment with Washoe County. And they wouldn't give me a printout. So it's, it, the it, data is incredible. And, and our system's not close to being done yet. No one can guarantee the student data will be safe from hackers. And once this data is out there, we can't take it back. We don't know what the implications are of having all this data on our children out there. We have no idea. Tom Constantine from Fallon, he was at our Fallon meeting. He said in the first quarter of this year, there were 39 data breaches at schools. And this is before it even gets to that next level where it's out for, this is just mind boggling what's happening. And again, not too many people know. As people discover, they don't like it. I don't know if we're gonna be able to stop it. The data quality campaign. The first four and a half months of this year, there were 80 bills introduced in 32 states. I, again, I, I'm, I don't know how many that'll be by the time we get back in session, but we'll have a couple, at least. At least one, one of the legislators told me. Ben Swan, a reporter from the Midwest. There's an article on his website titled, The Most Dangerous Domestic Spying Program is Common Core. This is the worst thing, one of the worst things with Common Core. And again, I'm just the messenger, you guys. The, the, all my presentation is fact-based. There's links at the bottom. If you get on the email list, I'll email you a PDF of this presentation. All the links are active. You can research it yourself. Superintendent of Public Instruction, several state superintendents have seen it. No one's ever really said anything is, is out of place with my presentation. Um, my, I, I say the only way to protect the children in Nevada is to stop the state the data tracking, pull out of the SBAC testing, and stop Common Core. Now, if you want to help, usually I give this presentation to people who already know they don't like it or parents who think they don't like it. If you want to help, um, this is all voluntary. It's costing me time and money, huh, Didi? Uh, we are collecting money to try to stop this. I just went to Las Vegas for a presentation. Um, if you want to get, if stay updated of what's going on and get this presentation, please make sure you get on my email list. And this would only be for Common Core. There's our website, Facebook, Nevadans Against Common Core. A national website, probably one of the best ones, is Truth in American Education. There is a movie, Common Core movie. They tell both sides of the story. It's not as negative as my presentation, <laughs> but it is out there. Red t-shirts, $10. Don't buy them. To, we don't make much money on these, but I do have them if you want them. We'll have more protests coming up. Um, Nevada Day Parade may be our next one. So if you're interested, buy a t-shirt, $10. I have all sizes at the moment. John, can Let you people know. a couple of questions? Yep. Yeah. Here, here's the rest of the stuff right there. And it's all the governor. So um, it, the, the biggest thing is informing people. <laughs> and the governor is the, is the one who, the only one right now who can do anything about this. Yes, ma'am. I have a question. In all your research, what do you think Gates' hidden agenda is? Why is he doing this? That was my question. I he mean, is he way back? Yeah. This is down with Obama. What really is the agenda here? Well, from the yeah. I mean, he it, it's already. I can see it. You know, I pads on every desk. That, but what is? I don't get it. It and seems like this is getting away from his. If you, if you take it from a very non-threatening or from a, uh, you know, optimistic point of view. He's doing what he thinks is best for the children, just like Elaine Wynn. She put up $200,000 to start this propaganda campaign because she thinks it's what's best for the children. That's one way to look at it. Now, 
eventually, it's all going to get down to one-to-one -one devices, which makes it even easier to attract the kids. And the software, Gates has already aligned with Pearson Education. Um, the Pearson software works with um, Microsoft's platform. Of course it, does. Um, it depends who you ask. I don't know what his motivations are. I just know that he's taken a lot of heat. And what happens is people learn the facts. They do not like this. And, and this is just beginning. And all these, these states that have already dropped it and all this controversy, we're just at the beginning of that. We're at the tip of the iceberg. As the year goes on, next year, this is going to get worse and worse. Sometimes I think this is going to be done. It's just a matter of how long is it going to mess everything up until it gets right again. But So I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I listened to him. He just came out the other day, and he's, again, talking about aligning the curriculum with the standards, which the standards were already aligned to the test. I, I don't know what his motivation is. So is this only in public schools? No, not exactly. Um, some Catholic schools have adopted it. Some private schools have adopted it. And even if the school doesn't adopt it, if the children take the AP exams, they're all aligned to Common Core. Kids that want to go to college, if they want to take the SAT, that'll be aligned with Common Core starting in 2016. So no, it's not just public schools. Catholic schools have an interesting um, issue. 132 Catholic professors have sent a, all signed a letter and sent it to all the bishops in the country saying if you've already ad adopted Common Core, and these are college professors mostly, if you've already adopted Common Core, back out. If you haven't adopted it yet, don't adopt it. And the Cardinal Newman Society is against it. Again, it, the conservatives were the ones who started out being against it. The liberals were against it for different reasons. Yes, sir. Uh, to tie on to that, so private college, if I want to send my kid to that, does he have to take the uh, SATs and that type of thing? It depends on the college. I think most do. There's a second page beyond that if you guys need it. Um, most do, I think, Ken, until something else comes along. The, at the college board is a private entity. They just get a whole bunch of money from the federal government. So probably right now, yes. Um, but we'll have to see what the future holds. I don't know. Yes, ma'am. Um, you came up with a statistic that 34% are for it, parents. So the other 76%, how did they get outvoted, outsmarted, not this, educated in this? How this, did this go as far as it's gone? This poll. That many are against it. 34% of parents with children in schools favor Common Core. They never asked us until after. These were just done in 2014. This was done in 2009 and 2010. They snuck it into the schools. Now it's there. One of the biggest arguments for this is, well, we've already spent, wasted all this money on it. We can't stop now. We've got to wait 10 years to see if it's going to work. Parents were never asked before. It was all snuck in. So parents didn't know what was going on. And was this the current... Uh uh, school board that was also in cahoots with the governors on this, or no? The local school, sort of the local school districts, pretty much have no say. Now, in some okay. states, we have some school boards that are saying we're not going to do it, and that's creating tension in their state. Okay. This came mostly from like the governor, the superintendent of public instruction. It mostly came from the top down. So the local school districts are trying to figure out like the teacher evaluations. How are we going to do this? Mm -hmm. So, no, the local school districts had hardly anything to say about this. Actually, they had nothing to say about it. And in this state, we're unique because we only have 16 or 17 school districts. That's, that's unusual. Some states have that many in one town or mm -hmm. one city. I saw a hand over here. Um, well, so let's say uh, a bunch of people called uh, Sandoval. What does he have to lose if he doesn't listen to... The election. The, He's up for election. And it's this, it's this, I think we should just all tell him, if, you know, we're, we oppose this. If you do not, um, you know, we intend to vote for somebody besides you. It's that simple. And that would be great if we had a really strong candidate on the other side. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, I, I think what Governor Sandoval is doing is waiting to see how many people we get. Since we've started this campaign in earnest, he hasn't said one word about Common Core. He sent Dale Urquiaga, the superintendent of public instruction, out to do things. He sent Elaine Wynn out to do things. He sent Pat Hickey or Randy Kerner or politicians out to do things. He hasn't said one word about this in a year since we started this campaign. I think what he's waiting for is to see how many people we get before he decides which side of the issue he's on. Oh. It's unfortunate. 
to me, that's not a leader at all. No. And I have a lot of problems. He knows me. They, I'm on their radar. <laughs> go ahead. Well, um, so I think what you said in the focus is, is to go after Sandoval. That's the only thing. Everything in this, I mean, I, I can't see one person in this room that could be for this after what you've told us. This is probably so the only <laughs> one person in the state that we can go after. This is probably the most negative presentation out there. I've watched most of the others from other states. Mine is totally one-sided. And I'm sorry to be the messenger, but these are the facts. It, it, the way I lay it out is, is my decision, but they're the facts. Um, Sandoval is the one we have to go after. So if you're on the email list, in, in, a, in a short time, we're going to send out a blast that says, call the governor on this day, email the governor on this day. We're gonna, we, we'll do that. I'll tell you, one person that's on our side and is trying to get through to the governor is a conservative talk host in 99.1, uh, Rick, Rick Roberts. Roberts. He is on this. He's trying to get the governor to come out. He's putting a lot of pressure on the governor. When I was in Vegas, um, Amy Tarkanian and Rory Reed, I was on their program. I don't know if they're going to be very helpful, um, but I know Rick Roberts here on 99.1 from 9 to noon is going to be helpful. Dee Dee. Okay, so come from the other side, besides the money people that are behind this, if this is implemented and we live with this the next 10 years, who would it benefit? Pearson Education, McGraw-Hill, and there's a lot of people, most of the people that are would going... It benefit any children at any level? It depends, you know, here, here's the thing with Common Core, it's very touchy-feely, kind of hands-on, and, and as an educator, I get where they're coming from, and I, I understand why third grade teachers like this. My wife teaches eighth grade math. She's not totally opposed to it. She doesn't know all this. She's never watched my presentation. She doesn't understand the implications of it all. She just knows for eighth grade math, it's not that bad. That's all she knows. So I get that, but what was your question? I forgot. Well, does it benefit any kids at any level? It depends who you ask. Now, what my my daughter's third grade math teacher told me, or third grade teacher told me last year, is she says, I like Common Core, and she's a brand new teacher. She says I like Common Core because I get to teach subtraction three different ways. Well, one of them you saw, yeah. but my question to her was, and she said, well, G your daughter understands lining it up and borrowing. She understands that. But now I'm going to teach it two or three other ways because some of the kids didn't get that. So for the kid that didn't get lining it up, is that way that we saw going to help? No. I say no. And, <laughs> no and in the meantime, well, Gianna's not doing something more advanced in math. She's learning three other ways, maybe two or three stupid ways to do the same thing that she already knows how to do. So she's not doing other things. And this is what Milgram understands. This is new math that's come back. It failed the first time, so we bring it back. And this is the problem. When you have a few people in the country deciding this for everybody else, that's what the problem is. And Massachusetts has the highest standards in the country. Here they are, okay? We could use Massachusetts standards, the English language arts and math standards. It took years to develop these. Teachers had input, parents had input, legislators had input, everybody had input into the Massachusetts standards. They took all the input, they created the best standards in the country. Years later, Massachusetts kids are high performing on international tests. Mil uh, Stosky was very involved in this. They totally ignored the Massachusetts standards. Common Core was never about high standards. Common Core was about common standards that are low enough to get many kids over and be able to test. And it's like a checkbox. A kindergarten teacher, or a kindergarten um, a room person, like a, a aide in a kindergarten class, she said the teacher spends all this time entering what the kids can do, and I think it's all related to this data tracking. It's like filing and say the kid can do this, 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 and I think that's going to be K-12, and it's the whole thing is wrong, and people don't know about it. And but it was fantastic. It's, okay, thank you. So thank much. you, John. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Start right there with that gentleman. <laughs>